This year, HCIL released a new version of TreeMap, TreeMap 4.0. We will give you a rapid tour to illustrate how to read a TreeMap and how to use the many controls and options found in the software. This TreeMap shows basketball statistics. Each box is a player with the size of the box proportional to the number of points and the color indicating the number of offensive rebounds. Black is no rebounds, yellow is pretty good, and green is a lot of rebounds. We can see that most high scorers are also good rebounders, but not all of them. The players are grouped in a hierarchy of divisions and teams. First comes the divisions, which is Atlantic, Central, Midwest, and Pacific. Then the teams, then the players. In this case, the layout uses a slice and dice algorithm. When I click on a player, I could see all the statistics about the player here on the right. And there is a lot of statistics. How did we create this tree map? We started with a data table here in Excel. At the top, I specified the name and type of the attributes, and the players are listed below. Now, let's load this data on TreeMap. Because there was no hierarchy specified in the file, all the players are in one big group. Using the Hierarchy tab, I can define the hierarchy. First, I group the players by division by selecting Division in the list of attributes and adding it to the hierarchy. Next, I add teams. But let's do it again so you could see the effect on the tree map. I start with one big group, add division, and now add teams. I can change the layout algorithm by using the main control panel. The default layout is use a squarified algorithm, which favors square boxes. But I could use strip or slice and dice. Mapping attributes to color, size, and labels is done in the legend control panel. By default, the labels use the first string attribute. Here are the player names, which is fine. For size, I choose points. For color, I choose offensive rebounds. By default, the values are mapped to a continuous scale, here from black to green. But I want to use more different colors. So I choose user-defined bins. And now I already have two bins with two default colors. I could click on the widget and add more bins. Right-clicking removes the bins. I can change any default color. I can adjust the position of the bin separators by dragging the bar or by editing the numbers here or here. When things get tight because there are too many bins, you can give more room to the widget or you could navigate through the bins with the previous and next button. I can save my settings into a settings file the default name mirrors the name of the data file, but of course I can't change it. Next time you start TreeMap, you should load your setting files, which in turn will load the data itself. You can filter the TreeMap using the Filter control panel. One control is created for each attribute. For example, one of the attributes is Conference. And if I decide I only care about the Western Conference player, I click on Western, and the Eastern teams and players are now grayed out. I can hide those gray boxes to see the remaining players better, 
and continue filtering with other filters. For example, here I can remove the players that didn't play too many minutes. So now I'm only looking at the Western Conference players who played a lot of minutes. I can also select individual node with control click and hide them. This is useful when a few nodes eat most of the display space, which is not the case here. A special control in the filter panel is the filter by depth control. Here it shows that we are showing all three levels of the hierarchy. By going up one level, I hide the leaf nodes of the tree, here aggregating players into teams. The aggregation function can be specified when the color attribute is selected. Several options are available, like the max, the average, the min, etc. A special option in the file menu allows me to map directories. I select a directory and click on Map Selected. I can now see the 2,000 files in this directory. By default, the size of the box is proportional to file size, and the color indicates the file type. Blue files are document, green files are graphic files. I could change or add any of the color, and then save my settings. I can also change the size or color mapping. For example, here the colors can be mapped to file age, showing at a glance where the big old files are. To zoom in on areas of interest, either double click on a group or select it and hit the Enter key. To zoom out, right click or use the Escape key. In the main control panel, I can change the font size or the border size, or I could even remove the leaf node labels and the borders, which becomes useful when the number of nodes is very large and every pixel counts. When the hierarchy cannot be defined by a series of attributes, it can be specified in a data file. This data corresponds to statistics about the 43 main causes of death. On the right of the attribute table, and after a blank column, the path in the disease hierarchy for each cause of death is specified. Note that this allows tree map to handle variable depth hierarchies. In tree map, each box is a disease. The size indicates the death rate in 1998. The color is a percentage change since 81. Diseases are grouped according to the disease hierarchy, allowing me to zoom on cardiovascular diseases, for example. In this example, I am monitoring projects of an hypothetical company. No hierarchy has been specified yet. Size is assigned to allocated budget and color to remaining balance. So red projects are overspent projects. The flexible hierarchy allows me to try many different ways to look at that data. For example, I can group by type, then by manager, or I could reverse and put manager first, then type. I can also use numerical attributes to define the hierarchy. First, let's remove this hierarchy. And now, let's say that I want to use a budget to define three categories for small, medium, and large budget. I select the budget attribute, and then specify that I want three equally spaced bins. Now I have my three bins, and I can add the attribute to the hierarchy. Now I have three groups, one for small projects, medium projects, and large projects. 